Welcome back to the Roadside Rescue YouTube channel. I'm Ernest, and on this episode, I'm gonna go do a tune-up on a Maxima. It's supposed to take like three hours to replace the spark plugs, so I'm guessing it's the same little V6 they have in, uh, what is it, like the 350s or the Infinities, where you have to remove the intake manifold. Ooh, probably should've got an intake manifold gasket. So they just bought the car, they want me to do a tune-up, so I'm gonna go ahead and look everything over while I'm in there and replace the spark plugs and hopefully we don't find anything surprising and it's just a normal tune-up. Well, I just stopped at the Maverick, got some tornadoes, like uh, breakfast taquitos. Their lunch ones are good. I haven't tried their breakfast ones. See how those are today. And uh, let's go find this car. I don't know where it's at yet. All right, so I just got here and uh, it is that 3.5, that motor I was talking about. They have in those Infinities in the 350s, I think. Uh, so you gotta do the intake manifold. It does have a multi-layered steel gasket, so we can reuse that. Um, if it looks bad or whatever, I'll just go get um, a new gasket, but let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, well, at least it's sitting this way. The other ones are sitting like this. So it might be kind of easy to get back there. Oh, what do we have upgrades in here? Some injectors probably. See if I notice anything weird. Um, a lot of stuff's been messed with. Look at all that electrical tape. Yeah, the ground wire's been replaced. Who knows if that's been connected well. It just looks like it's been spliced together with some electrical tape. Might come back out here one day for a grounding issue. Okay, let's get this cover off and see what we're dealing with. Oh, look, I just had that bit. Um, I never leave these covers on my vehicle, but I put them back on for the customers, but I'll just put them on hand tight so if they ever have to look at something themselves, they don't need the tool to get this back off. This covers up a bunch of stuff. I'd rather be able to see what's going on half the time. Yeah, looks like I'm gonna be able to give them a discount. Because, um, ain't no way it's supposed to take three hours to remove this intake manifold and do those spark plugs back there. So, that'll be good news for him. It is a 3.5, but it's a different gen motor. The other one, if you've ever seen, it has just this large intake point and that covers up both sides and there's a bunch of work, a bunch of hoses to get it off. This isn't gonna be bad. It'll still be, like we've got EGR here. A little more difficult than an average intake manifold but an hour and a half two hours at most probably okay i've come up with a game plan since i'm not exactly sure what's going on with this car i'm doing an inspection uh, i've seen before with bad head gaskets or just issues in a cylinder where it was hard to get out a spark plug or let's say i take one of these out and i realize it's not worth replacing the ones in the back there's like an issue or something I would rather figure that out before I take this intake off. So I'm gonna take these three spark plugs out first, make sure those all look good, um, make sure I don't need um, the little boots, the little rubber boots on these coils, uh, which I'm not anticipating. There might be a leak, so I'll clean that up if there is. Give it a good look. I'm gonna put an inspection camera down there as well, but anyways, my point is let's do these first and then we'll attack that intake manifold if uh, we're gonna proceed. It's also supposed to rain today, so I'm a little worried about that coming in the afternoon and the temperature is supposed to go from like 50 down to 30 by like one o'clock in the afternoon and it's like almost 11 now it's well it's probably way closer to 10 it's right after 10 i guess um so hope i can get this done before anything happens we'll find out having a little wall right next to where I'm working. Doesn't happen often. Nice, no oil. That's great. Yep, not worried about those boots right now. Nice, uh, I haven't 
checked if these are the standard size spark plugs yet or if they're 14 millimeter. They look like they might be 14 millimeter. I was gonna say maybe these are really new plugs from the look of it. They don't look like it though. Definitely can replace those. Wait, let's whip these out real quick and stick an inspection camera down there. See what we're dealing with inside those cylinders. Look at this. right next to the neck. This time watch, one finger right here. <laughs> Those aren't tight at all. That's actually how you get your spark plugs to blow out. I not put them in tight enough. Or you just, I'm gonna Triton 5.4. But here's the weird part, like what's on the piston right there. It looks like it might be old E85 or ethanol fuel, basically. It leaves some residue like that. Let me know what you guys think. That's kind of what my guess is, that they're running some ethanol on this. Based off of maybe these injectors. Um, they had the OE plugs in there though, so it should be fine. Got some new double platinum plugs here. The gap on this is 0 0.44, 0 0.044. Um, I never really checked the gap though, all the spark plugs come pre-gapped. Yeah, that was good news. Exciting to see that the valve cover is not leaking. That's almost always causing issues, so just not. I'm having to worry about that on the back burner. Planning on replacing that would be a lot more expensive than the spark plugs on this car. There, maybe two. Yeah, definitely two. Three. Four. Dang, God, we didn't want that going anywhere. Okay, at least four in the back, but they're not super hard to get to. And then, oh, weird design up here where you don't have any bolts passed through the manifold. You just have one, two, three, four, five on the outside here. I gotta get all that off first, let's do it. All right, so I've just gotta get the rest of the stuff disconnected from this intake manifold. It shouldn't be hard. Um, there's those bolts in the back that are hard to squeeze my hand to get to, but other than that, there's just a couple of clips and stuff. I'll show you the clips on the back when I get them done. They're a little hard to deal with, so I figured out a little trick with those. But again, it shouldn't be too hard. I'm expecting to finish this job way quicker than the computer thought it would take me. I don't know why all that. I thought this was gonna be three hours. I think it might be the same motor, but the intake's nowhere near as hard to get off. There's literally no throttle block gasket, look. Oh my god, let's be careful with the gasket. There's no gasket here. That's crazy. <laughs> it didn't fall out, there's just literally not a gasket. All right, that's crazy. <laughs> I've never seen that. I've seen some weird issues with throttle body gaskets being sideways or broken and having a hard time figuring that out, but I've never just not seen one. I've got some forming gasket I may just give it a little bead of that before I go 
Okay, unfortunately the um, throttle body heater lines are on the intake manifold itself, so I'm probably just gonna have to kind of twist it out of the way like this, get to those spark plugs behind it, but uh, one more uh, vacuum line back there, and you can see that bracket, and you can see that bracket, right there has two bolts on it, and there's another one, uh, you can see the bolt holes underneath the manifold right there. All right, there was just one bolt on the bracket on that side, but there was two on that side. So I've gotten those three off, the two hoses there. I'm leaving the hoses with coolant in them on right there. If we needed to, we could split the manifold here, but I don't worry about that. Hopefully this moves out of the way. I was trying to unbolt the bracket right there for a minute, which has a little 10 millimeter. I couldn't get anything on that well, so I just was like, why don't I just pop those little connectors off the bracket? And as you can see, that folds out of the way with just enough room. So let's do the spark plugs back here. They said that their tachometer doesn't work, their fuel gauge doesn't work, and their radio doesn't work. So when I'm done, I'm gonna look at those three things as well. But so far so good. I've been here probably a little over an hour, so um, right on track to finish in like it's gonna be two and a half if I look at those other things, but it'll still probably be forty bucks cheaper than we thought. Valve covers in good shape. Valve cover gasket too. no room to disconnect that last coil so I'm just gonna pinch the clip and then pry it off with this okay. all right three more plugs and let's look at those other issues but I'm guessing that just see if the fuel pump's under the seat I can check for signal for the sending unit it's probably the sending unit well I don't know if the tachometer doesn't work either okay interesting I didn't pay close enough attention to these plugs when I took them out but these are not OE so somebody just did not put those in tight enough it could have caused an issue I'm guessing they replaced this gasket when they did it because it looks so new um, the spark plugs again look old enough to replace, but on top of that, they're not even the right plug. These are iridiums, and OE for this car is double platinum, so not good. This should help. Um, I don't know if you don't notice any performance, but it'll get a cleaner burn with the correct plugs in there. Crazy. So I guess it depends on the day, but there's definitely some times when I like putting stuff together better than I like taking it apart because I guess you have to do all the thinking when you take it apart, when you put it back together, you just have to remember the right order, I guess. So you don't have to think that much, especially if the order isn't tricky. Sometimes when it is, I forget which piece I took off first and I have to go back a few steps. But not this time, I got everything going back together great. Um, I was worried about when I was tightening up the intake manifold, those three bolts in the back, I forgot to get those started before I tightened everything up, but that was no problem. Those three in the back went in just fine and everything bolted up tight. So if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below. Check out the next video in the corner up here in a second and check out the running car at the end. Well, it's running great. I'm checking what the check engine light's on for. Uh, right there hopefully it's nothing related to what i'm doing the coolant temperature sensor is also maxed out this thing is not hot i mean it might be warm now but it's not overheating and those fans are just on non-stop so there's another issue that i don't know if i'm going to be able to figure out any of these today the radio maybe maybe it just needs the code okay well that's why those fans are on uh not something i messed with today i can come back and diagnose that probably